So it's very apt today's video is going up on a Sunday because it's time for another roast. And dad jokes aside, I thought today we bring back a very lighthearted and entertaining topic to the channel that I know you guys love and I enjoy making. And that is a luxury roast video. But we're gonna pivot things slightly from what I usually do in terms of roasting handbags. Today, we're actually gonna be talking about luxury footwear. If you hear some noises, that is indeed my puppy eating on a beef chew. And actually, we'll see if she comes over. Pebbles, do you want to come on the sofa? Say hello, Pebbles, to everybody. Woo! Sometimes I scroll on my feed and I come across a new footwear that is out or something that's really trending. Why well, I understand beauty is indeed in the eye of the beholder and that, you know, people have their own individual unique tastes and preferences. I can't help but feel that there are universal beauties that we can acknowledge, you know, that are hanging in the National uh, Gallery, that are in the Louvre. And yet there are these visual abominations, shall we say. Some of it is just hideous. Plus with the price tags of footwear at the moment in the several hundreds, if not thousands at this stage, it's just tomfoolery that I'm not gonna engage in, okay? And so we've collated 10 luxury footwear pieces that you can buy right now. And then we have some honorable mentions at the end of this video. So stick around for that. Let's start off with the first brand, the first shoe. And I suppose it's like a collection or category of shoes, this one, as opposed to a specific model. And it's a brand that I just really don't, <laughs> don't understand why people are still buying from. And that is, of course, Balenciaga. Surprise, surprise. I've bucketed these trainers, the sneakers category, as one because, frankly, they're all as ugly as each other and I can't decide which one. So you may want to help me in the comments down below. So we first got up these Balenciaga Runner trainers and these you know they're the epitome of the dad sneaker trend and it had to an extent done quite well for them up until the scandal happened the cp scandal happened some people seem to be forgiving them i for one haven't and i know a lot of the mass population haven't either because their stores are empty they're still trying to push these classics okay and so they released the runners. They've clearly come out in a few versions because I've now named this one 2.0. And <laughs> Pebbles is really aggressively chewing on a stick there. These are by no means cheap as well. These are 800 pounds for these abominations. I mean, come on, some of them even look used, like this uh, 2.0 here. And then you've got all these crazy colors. These are like children's shoes. And you can almost be forgiven if you're a child wearing these shoes. On an adult, a fully grown adult with responsibilities and financial obligations to buy these, I don't think so. Let's look at these multicolored abominations. It looks like a rainbow threw up on the shoe. Then you've got the shoe size written in what looked like marker on the tip of the toe. And I just, I hate how Balenciaga does this. Like, do I need to be announcing to the world my shoe size? And for an 800 pound price tag, I just think that is daylight robbery. Let's move to the triple S. These ones, oh my goodness. I've seen these all over for the last couple of years and thank goodness I'm seeing them less now because of the scandal and what I don't really understand why because they look very bulbous I mean the other dad shoes are bulbous as well but these are mountains okay these are volcanic eruptions happening on your feet you'd think okay so maybe if they're like the feeler disruptors which I have you know they're they're a little bit of bulbous but just you know in reference to your foot they don't make them look bigger these actually make your feet look like two or three sizes bigger and they are really heavy as well you can see why because it's just sole on this one and they elevate your feet like about three inches off the ground so you're wearing like little stilts I mean, this one in particular looks like someone's got a red byron and wrote balenciaga on it plus the color looks a little bit moldy they are just absolutely horrific looking some of them look like mud some of them got like barbie kind of balenciaga on it but for 800 pounds almost 900 pounds um absolute waste of money so let's go into this crusty looking one that we saw at the top god up close it looks even worse it really does look like someone's actually written the uh balenciaga in byron i think it's a little bit patronizing actually and i did notice this oh pebbles you want to have a look as well these horrible shoes they kind of patronize us by putting the name of the shoes like triple s and even runner on the other ones yes we know what these are you push them on social media all the time we get it your shoe size is 39, all right? For the stalkers out there, that will be definitely satisfying. And then we've got the final one that I will show you at least for this video. And this is the women's, the track trainers, okay? I don't know who's bringing these on the track, okay? You're not a serious runner if you bring any of these shoes, at least of all the track ones to your next sporting event. It looks like muck, you know, the uh, Pokemon. <laughs> That looks like mud. It looks like that. The color schemes are pretty awful. This yellow one, this musty yellow is not 
my favorite, just putting it kindly. So let's actually just click into this one very quickly. It's like skin tissue, you know, when inside, when you're, and it's quite specific, isn't it? It's like organ tissue, it's like stretched. And especially in this color, it does look a bit like skin. It says track in here. It's got loads of holes through it and loads of textures going on. Oh, but that is yours for the generous price of 825 for a disgraced brand. I said at the beginning, you know, a little bit of a disclaimer around, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder and, you know, each of their own opinions and your money is your money. But I can't help but feel that if you are wearing any of these sneakers, that you're still kind of proudly wearing their brand it speaks volumes to you as a character. Some people might go on the defensive and say, well, you know, people can change. I think when it comes to CP, we got to draw a line, people. I mean, it's ugly and then you also don't have morals. You're an ugly person with no morals, okay? But let's move on to our next brand and that is Bottega Veneta. They're the hottest brand of the moment. Everybody is going on about them. But this pair of shoes, I don't know if anybody should be going on about them because these are the Bottega Jumbo sneakers and Jumbo they are because they're giving me clown shoes. Where do I start? The fact that it's a neon green color, and basically half of the shoe is sole. And then the pièce de résistance, the chef's kiss, the uh, turned up snout, and look at the front view. Oh, who doesn't want to look like a clown just came out of a little, little car? It looks like if you were to end up in the water with these, you would float because you've got basically some rafts on them. Oh, and now we have, the questions are all answered. We do have a little bit of a little uh, seating area, if you will, on the boat. The only thing that I wish we had was a model wearing them. Maybe we can see this from another model. You can get a white on white moment here, and then you can also get a black moment. Here we go. Ooh, I mean, they just don't look very nice, do they? It's really elf shoes, might I say. And it also looks like you could just step off and like the bottom part would just come off. They were detachable, perhaps that would add an extra layer of functionality to them. And they are yours for what would be like a thousand pounds. I've never really been into Bottega items. Okay, they make some nice things, but on the whole, I think it's a little bit gimmicky. You know, when you see things like this, it doesn't really tend to shift my opinion. Now let's move on to our next brand, also starting with B and it's Burberry and you know when you think of Burberry you think classic Burberry trench you think of their scarves but would you think of a furry sandal and so here we have a variety of fur sandals because if I'm honest with you there are quite a few and it would not be fair to the rest of the fur sandals if I just picked one so let's start with these shearling step rose sandals which have a little rose on them and then you've got like fur on the rest of it. I mean, that just looks awful. It looks like Marie Kondo socks with one of those like floor cleaner brushes things. That looks like the Lorax's moustache, okay? Just like somebody skinned him alive and put him on a shoe. Doesn't look better from the back actually. And then you've got it in purple in case that's what you wanted. And then you've got, which I think is the worst offender of the lot, this pair, the Shearling Step Post sandals. And it's got little tail on the back and the model's not making it work any better for us. What in tarnation is going on here? Look at these. Look at these pebbles. And you are wet from drinking from your water bottle. Mm. And these ones are in the black and night colorway. This shoe has a tail, people. It's got a tail. Not only that, it also has a thong strap. So it's like a flip flop, but it's kind of like bondage style because you've got these straps over the top and then you've just got fur everywhere and my goodness that just looks like a dead ferret on your foot it looks like a floor mop and lord knows what you're sweeping on the floor when you're going out god forbid you get caught out in a downpour what is that going to do to your little ferret and for the price of 950 pounds it is just not worth doing and the satin step fuzz sandals i mean it just looks like you've got a hairy foot those are all the furry sandals from burberry i do think burberry has quite drastically changed its image and I don't think it's for the better. They've lost their classic appeal. I don't think that this image of them pivoting to like a Bottega of a Balenciaga or Jacquemus is that much better. Next up for shoe number four, we have Givenchy. And these shoes I think will surprise a lot of people because everybody's going on about them, okay? And I just really don't get why. So this might be an unpopular opinion. And these are the Givenchy shark boots. While they're not that offensive in relation to the prior shoes that we talked about, it just gives you stilts vibes, which I didn't really 
think is one that we would universally think is a good look for us. Especially given that the calf gets wider, it's almost like a trapeze shape, it gets slightly wider as it goes down. Why would you want your leg to look like basically a tree stump? It's stumped me, to be honest. I didn't want to make a pun, but it just came out. It's not doing anything for your calves, loves. And I get it. Some people think it looks really cool with it. Maybe like, you know, the whole mob wife trend at the moment with like a fur coat or something. But it's it's actually getting wider as it goes down. So it just kind of looks like a Lego foot or something like that for the price tag of almost £2,000. I mean, £1,750 is a lot of money to spend on a novelty item, which will invariably go out of style. They come in various different colorways and different even heights as well of the little stilt. So depending on what you like, there is something for everybody, but I just think they look pretty awful to be honest. And the skin colored one, oh, it just actually is gonna make your foot look from afar like it's pretty deformed. And we've got our little visitor again to cover our next shoe, number five. And it's a brand I've never talked about and probably for good reason. And it's Golden Goose because we're gonna be talking about their worn sneakers, their superstar sneakers or mid-star sneakers, which I really don't understand why you would want to fork out what is basically almost 500 pounds for a used shoe. I know the hype beasts are gonna be coming for me at this stage, but honestly, I don't care. Because you know what? I'm actually questioning the financial decision-making you have. And what I would say is while none of these are objectively offensive designs, they're pretty beige, to be honest, there's nothing special about them, which is also another reason why I don't really think they're that interesting or wow. But the fact that you've got a used soul, I just don't understand why you would want that. And of course, that is something different. It's controversial. It gets the clicks and the eyeballs online. But I do think it's a bit of a scam to charge people that amount of money for something that is invariably going to happen when you wear a shoe out for a few times. I mean, I could do that for free for your shoes. And also they are scuff. I mean, why? Why? God forbid you get those out in an actual muddy situation, what they will then look like. It's a shame because they are objectively better looking shoes than we've seen before, but with the use sole, I just don't get it. Now moving on to our next shoe and we're on to Gucci. And these shoes I think are also along a similar kind of theme because we're talking about the Gigi Wrighton sneaker. Oh yes, we've got the bulbous, base of the shoe again. The bulbacity is real, if that's a word. Logo mania is happening. We've got multiple colours going on. It is just so much activity and all for 720 So slightly more affordable than the Balenciagas, may I add. So it's a good alternative if you would like to waste some money or perhaps launder it, I suppose, because I don't know why else someone would want to buy these. And some are worse than others, obviously like this brown abomination, which looks like you've just stepped in poo. Don't know who on the design team, were they high that day? What were they thinking when they designed this? Because there's like logos going on, different types of prints, different colors, different textures. Actually, all from the top, it is not looking good from the sky, huh? All the Gucci's, you're like, we get it, it's Gucci. And we've got plenty other offending items here, but we do have other shoes to get into. I think we get the gist there. And now let's move on to our next shoe. I believe it is number seven, and we're moving to Louis Vuitton. We've got a couple from Louis Vuitton, actually. These from Louis Vuitton, I've seen at least on one creator, at least, called Christy Sarah. A lot of you may know her. She makes the funniest videos with her and her family, and she always buys the weirdest shoes. And this one was one of them, and I immediately, when I saw them, I had to look it up and see if it was for real, because these are the Louis Vuitton Illusion High Boots. Obviously, we've got a pair of shoes that looks like they are pumps and socks and thighs. Depending on your skin colour, I think you can get different ones. I don't know why else you would wear this apart from for a joke, but, you know, you can get the look, you can get the whole look. You know, business up top, party on the bottom. If that's something that you want to go for, you can get it for the very reasonable price of 1880 Yeah, I said that. I just don't understand what would compel you to create, let alone purchase a shoe like this. Unless you're gonna buy it for a joke like Christy did. I mean, even so, it's an expensive joke because you can't then return them, they won't do the refund. It's if you've worn it and it's just gonna sit there growing dust in your wardrobe forever and ever. It's not even the shoe combination that a lot of us would have, you know, court shoes with socks. I mean, who thinks of that, you know? That's like sandals with socks. And then on top of that, you've got a calf and it's not even fitting your calf tight on. So, you know, 
even if you didn't shave your legs that day, it wouldn't even be your shoe that you could get away with as your leg because it's not a direct match and it's not skin tight. So more questions than answers, I will say. But let's leave that one aside for now and move on to our next shoe from Novaton as well. And these are offensive for a number of reasons because they actually draw inspiration from a shoe that I wish people would stop wearing. And it is the Louis Vuitton shark clogs and of course they look like the hideous love child of the Dutch clog but also mixed in with the horrific croc shoe. These look almost like the outer shoe that you get at the hospital or something when you're going through for hygiene. I don't understand what would compel you to buy this for £580 but they're online for a reason so I guess people might want to wear them. They could make a nice house slipper I guess. You know if no one was to see you wearing these just for the comfort factor you could probably get away with it. Now moving on to our next shoe and we have again another brand that I haven't talked about on this channel and it's Maison Margiela and we have the Tabby shoe. They've made tabbies in a variety a multitude of different footwear options so you've got lace-up shoes, you've got brogues, you've got heels, you've got flats, cowboy boots and I just don't know who wanted a literal camel toe. Funny, but you're actually gonna have to wear these and you're actually going to spend money on these and for basically like a thousand pounds, is it worth the joke? And especially for the ones that go up to basically like 2,600 pounds, I mean, they're a little bit less obvious in terms of the camel toe, but some of these are literally shouting camel toe at you. It really does seem like a psyops. People are trying to make fetch happen, but it's not, not happening. And we need to stand firm, people. We need to say, no, there is a line. And the camel toe shoes are aligned, people. And so let's go into this brogues one because these ones from the side look normal. Then you've got the party in the front. I don't know why people are trying to go for the shock factor these days, but people are clearly still getting money from it. So they're not going to stop, but we need to make them stop because these look awful. It's not just the fact that they've sewn a little camel toe, like they've actually separated your toes for you, which, you know, I'm all for the barefoot revolution, barefoot movement. I myself have vivos, you know, to splay your foot out a little bit more, but you're only doing the front toe. And I can't help but think that the, the leather looks rock hard. So it's not like it's doing your feet any favors. We're just gonna leave that on there and we're gonna pivot now to our final shoe of the 10 and I've saved perhaps the best or last. And it is the Mischief Big Red Boot. Oh yes. This, this has been viral many times over, not just for the Big Red Boot, but they had like the yellow boot that kind of like a croc or whatever. While they're more affordable than the other shoes, they're $350, so what, like 300 something pounds. I just don't see why you'd want these, unless you're going for Astro Boy as a Halloween costume. That is quite a very specific niche though, I must say. I just can imagine all the foot sweat that is accumulating in this shoe. Mm, very nice. It's not even like a red boot that is sculpted to your leg. No, it's deliberately making your foot look bulbous. And if you're not wearing a sock inside, Lord save you from the sweat that is accumulating and pooling inside. All the hype beasts were all over this and spending their money on it. And you know, you can even get it in black now. I don't even know where this brand came from. It just came out of nowhere and they just started making crazy stuff and people kept buying into it. But you know what, rather you than I, but anyways, those were the 10 luxury shoes that we were roasting today. Of course, I have some honorable mentions from footwear that you can no longer buy, but if you're lucky, perhaps you might get them. So let's start off with actually another pair of Gucci shoes. And these ones, I remember seeing them everywhere maybe a few years ago. I think you still buy them on resale. Clearly you can, because this website popped up for me. And these are the Gucci Flash Trek shoes. And I think these were in a collaboration with Sega, which makes sense because I think some of the jewels and gems are like from Sonic or something. But this one in particular, this multicolored abomination, I mean, it's giving me Thanos, it's giving me the gauntlet. And here we have all the gemstones. You see all these other colors here. Oh my goodness, this one in the pink velvet is just screaming at me. They are also pretty expensive, might I add as well, like 700 pounds for some of these. And I just think your money could be better spent elsewhere. Then for our final two honorable mentions, they are all from the same brand and that is Loewe. And Pebbles, do you want to join us for the final two shoes, the finale about the Loewe broken egg sandals? Apart from being a practical joke, like, oh, I stood in an egg, ha ha. Who wanted a broken egg? sandal in the first place that's like 10 seconds of gratification whereas you're spending 1200 pounds for life apart from the egg it's a normal shoe it's a good looking shoe and then you bring the egg in and it's just like oh the party's in the back and then the final shoe to wrap up this video also from loewe is the loewe balloon 
pales. The most iconic one is the red ones here that you see right about now. You see these red balloons as heels or even on the front as well, like a squish one. It almost looks like a skin tag of some sort or a hemorrhoid. Then you're also seeing these balloon ones of these ends of balloons and they do look like one of those floor mops again. And you can also get them in yellow. Uh, skin coloured ones as well. Yeah, if it wasn't disturbing enough that you could look like you've got basically like a sponge on your foot or some sort of weird growth that is happening on your foot as well. And you know, they've made plenty more balloon ones that no one wanted, but they gave us anyway. And I believe those will be in the upwards of the thousand pound mark, even though they're no longer on sale. But I'm sure if you are lucky that you may be able to get your hands on one and be the talk of the town. But that all being said, those are the ugliest designer shoes that I can find. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did looking at the shoes. I will leave this video right here. Thank you as always for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.